Hi, in this video we are going to look at a very interesting problem called planar graph coloring and how to solve the problem of planar graph coloring using an approximation algorithm. I have already created a video on the introduction to approximation algorithms and I will highly recommend you to watch that before watching this. The outline of this lecture is going to be like this. We will initially look at the graph coloring problem and we will also seriously look at some of its real-time applications to motivate it further. And then we will see about planar graphs. And after that we will look at a very interesting theorem called the four color theorem. We will also look at what are bipartite graphs. And then we will jump into uh, the approximation algorithm for solving the planar graph coloring problem. And finally we will also see a performance guarantee of this algorithm. Graph coloring is a way of coloring the vertices of a graph such that no two adjacent vertices share the same color. And we'll look at some of the terminologies in graph coloring. A graph is said to be k-colorable if it can be properly colored using k-colors. In the sense, no two adjacent vertices should share the same color. Now, the chromatic number chi of g of a graph g is the minimum k for which g is k-colorable. Note that this letter is a Greek letter which is pronounced as chi. In simple terms, it means the minimum number of colors required to properly color a given graph. Now let us look at some typical graph coloring examples. Uh, given that you don't have any vertices, then you also don't require any colors to color it. So the number of colors to color a graph with no vertices is going to be zero. And uh, given that you have just one vertex, then the number of colors required also will be one. Now, if your graph has only a single edge like this, then you, uh, you definitely require two colors. Uh, for example, if you color this endpoint with a red color, then you should color the other endpoint with a different color, say green. So you require two colors. Now let us do some more examples. In the first figure, suppose if I color one of its vertices with say a red color, then I can't, I will not be able to choose red color for any, any remaining vertex because it is adjacent to the already colored vertex. So I will have to choose a different color, say blue for this vertex and say yellow for this vertex. So in this case, you require a minimum of three colors to properly color this graph. Now let us try a coloring for the second graph which looks like a square. Uh, it is clear that uh, if we give different colors to different vertices, it will never violate the properties of graph coloring. So we can give a blue color here, we can give a red color here, we can give a green color here and we can give a yellow color here. So properties of graph coloring will not be violated. But the question is, is this the minimum number of colors required to color this? The answer is no. We can use uh, fewer colors to color this graph. Uh, let's try to color this with three colors. Suppose if I am giving a red color here, uh, I can give the same red color in the opposite corner and I can use two different colors to color the other corners, say green and yellow, like this. Now can we do better? The answer is yes. We can actually color this graph with two colors. It can be done like this. If I give a red color here in this corner, it is clear that in the opposite corner, I can give the same red color. Similarly, if I give a green color here, it is also clear that uh, in the opposite corner, I can give the same green color. So the minimum number of colors required to color this graph is going to be two. Now for the rest of the graphs given, uh, we will do a coloring using minimum number of colors. Let us now try to do a minimum coloring for the next graph given here. Suppose that I am coloring this vertex with a red color. Now we cannot use the same red color in any of the three vertices which are left out because they are connected to the red vertex now. So I will have to choose a different color. Suppose I am choosing a blue color. Now I will have to look for possibilities of using the same blue color again. 
and it turns out that I cannot uh, use the blue color here but I can use the blue color here now in this vertex we cannot use a red color because it's already used here and uh, we cannot even we cannot also use the blue color so we'll have to go for a different color say a green color now it is evident that this graph can be colored using a minimum of three colors similarly for the rest of the graphs which are given you can verify that the coloring can be done like this is suppose if I am giving a red color here it is evident that I cannot use it anywhere so I will have to go for a different color and uh, the green color now cannot be used in anywhere so I have to go for a blue color now the blue color cannot be used again so I will have to go for a different color say yellow so this particular graph requires a minimum number of four colors now let us go ahead and uh, apply a minimum coloring for the next graph suppose if I am using a green color here uh, the only possibility of applying a green color is either here or here so I will apply here and uh, suppose in the next case if I apply a blue color here um, now a blue the same blue color can be applied here now uh, one more vertex is left out this can be colored uh, you can you cannot use a blue or a green there so you have to go for a different color say a yellow color now instead of using colors you can also use numbers to represent colors for example if I'm using uh, notating green color with a one here the same one will be applied here this is a different color so I'll say this as a two and this is also two and this is another color so I'll assign three so in this way also you can uh, alternatively allocate numbers instead of colors it will be really interesting to study about some of the applications of graph coloring in fact graph coloring is applied in a wide range of practical problems one of the examples is with regard to the allocation of broadcast frequencies the figure shown here represents a network of radio stations the constraint here is that you cannot allocate the same frequency to two different radio stations if they are geographically nearby for example the figure shown here contains two radio stations R1 and R2 and they are said to be nearby because the range of R1 intersects the range of R2 two radio stations are said to be far apart only if there is no intersection in their ranges as shown in this figure With this knowledge, let's try to color the given network of radio stations. Suppose I am choosing a red color for this radio station, then it will not be possible to choose red for the nearby stations. So I will have to choose uh, another color for the stations which are nearby. Suppose I am choosing a green for this station and a blue color for this station. Now, uh, this particular station which is here, is geographically far apart from the first station which is marked in red so we can choose a red color again for this station now for this station I cannot use a red blue or green because they are intersecting with the other vertices which are already colored so I will have to go for a different color suppose I am choosing a an yellow color to color this one now we are left out with only one vertex it is clear that we cannot use a red color or a yellow color here uh, we can either use a blue color or a green color so let me choose a blue color again now we are successful in coloring this graph using the constraints given uh, remember that the colors here refers to frequencies for instance the red color may represent a frequency say f1 the blue color may represent a frequency say f2 and green color f3 and yellow color represents f4 it is very important to note that the vertices here represents stations and colors represents frequencies now we will discuss another important application of graph coloring with regard to computer science domain which is uh, register allocation we know that a large program may contain named variables 
And uh, we also know that uh, our computer has a very small number of registers to handle basic operations. Typically, we have 32 registers in a computer. Now, the compiler has to allocate variables to specific registers. But when doing so, there is a constraint. If two variables are used at the same time, then they should not be allocated to the same register. Now, this can be expressed as a graph coloring problem. The vertices in this coloring problem are variables and the colors are registers. So, two variables are connected by an edge if they are in use at the same time so that they cannot share a register. Now, another application is about job scheduling. Two jobs cannot be scheduled at the same time if they are dependent, in the sense if they are using same resources. So, such jobs should not be performed at the same time. So, in this particular example, uh, vertices represents time slots and colors represents jobs. Now, we will try to understand what is a planar graph. A graph is said to be planar if it can be drawn in the plane without any edge crossings. So, in your screen, you can see four graphs, out of which we can identify two of them are planar by looking into them. There are no edge crossings at all. But for this graph and this graph, there are edge crossings. So, we may think that they are not planar. But the fact is that we can redraw it without any edge crossings. For example, in this graph, we can delete this particular edge and connect it like this. In the second example that is here, uh, one of the edges can be uh, removed. For example, I can remove this edge and it can be drawn like this. Now, the resulting graphs will look like this and we can clearly see that there are no edge crossings. The moral of the story is that even though there are edge crossings in a graph, it should be checked that they can be drawn without edge crossings in a different way. And if it is possible, then they are also coming under the set of planar graphs. It will be good if we check a few more graphs. There are two graphs given in your screen. You can now pause the video for some time and check whether these are planar. In fact, you can verify that the first graph is a planar graph. Uh, you can see that the vertices are numbered from 1 to 5. Let me number it in a different way here. So, vertex, vertex number 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Now, if you look at vertex 1, you can see that there is a connection to 3 and 4. Let me draw those connections here. From 1, from one you have a connection to 3 and also to 4. Okay. Similarly, from vertex 2, uh, there is a connection to 5 and 4. So, let me draw those connections. Uh, let me draw the connection to 5 and there is a connection to 4. And now, from vertex 3, there is a connection to 1 and 5. So, the connection to 1 is already draw drawn and uh, we have to connect vertex 3 to 5. So, it can be done like this. Now, if you look at vertex 4, there should be a connection to 1 and 2, which is already done. And from vertex 5, there is a connection to uh, 2 and 3, which is already done. We can see that in the resulting graph, there are no edge crossings. And so, the original graph is a planar graph. The second graph which is shown here is a complete graph with 5 vertices. You can try to remove all the edge crossings thereby making it a planar graph. But the fact is that you cannot remove all the edge crossings. And therefore, this comes under the category of a non-planar graph. Now, the four color theorem is a very famous theorem about planar graphs. It states that every planar graph it can be colored using four colors. Formally, every planar graph is four colorable. It means that at the most, you require only four colors to color a planar graph. A couple of planar graphs are shown in the screen. Now you can pause the video for some time and verify that these graphs can be colored 
uh, using at most four colors. Now, the problem of determining whether a planar graph can be colored using three colors is an NP hard problem. Therefore, it will take years of time to determine it if the value of the number of vertices is very large. It is really interesting to learn some history about the four color theorem. The four color theorem dates back to 1852 when Francis Guthrie, while trying to color the map of England, noticed that four colors were sufficient. He asked his brother, who was a British physicist, that if it was true that any map can be colored using four colors in such a way that adjacent regions receive different colors. Frederick was very interested and communicated this matter to his mathematics teacher Augustus D. Morgan, who was a leading British mathematician at that time. Augustus D. Morgan worked seriously on this and could not find any counterexamples. This particular problem has raised a lot of interest among the mathematicians of that time. Many of them tried to prove this formally but was not very successful. It took around more than a hundred years for someone to come up with a proof. We will see the details in the next slide. It was in 1976 that Kenneth Apel and Wolfgang Haken were successful in coming up with a proof for the four color theorem. And this proof uses computers and the proof was extremely complicated. This proof of the four color theorem is also noteworthy of being the first major computer aided proof. This proof has a wide range of academic interest and many, many were successful in coming up with less complicated proofs. Now, before moving into the approximation algorithm, we should also have a knowledge about bipartite graphs. A bipartite graph is a graph whose vertices can be divided into two independent sets u and v such that every edge small u comma small v where small u belongs to capital u and small v belongs to capital v either connects a vertex from u to v or a vertex from v to u it means that there should not be an edge connecting the vertices in the same set the graphs shown here are examples of bipartite graphs for example the first graph the vertices in the first graph can be split up into two sets u and v and we can verify that there is no there are no edges connecting the vertices in the same set it can be done like this suppose i have a set u here and a set v here now i will add the blue vertices to set u this is my set u and this is my set v the blue vertices are 1 1 3 and 5 so i will add those values here 1 3 and 5 and uh, I will add the red vertices to my set V, which are 2, 4 and 6. 2, 4 and 6. 2, 4 and 6. And I will connect as per the connections in the graph. So from 1 there is a connection to 2. There is also a connection to 6. From 3, if you see from 3 there is a connection to 2. And there is also a connection to 4. Similarly, from 5, you have a connection to 6. And there is a connection to 4. So you can see that there are, there are no connections like this. That is from 1 to 3 or 3 to 5 or 2 to 4 or 4 to 6. So in such a case, it is, it is evident that we can draw it as a bipartite graph. The speciality of bipartite graphs is that you can use two colors to color them. For example, uh, all the vertices in set U can be colored using a red color like this, 1, 3 and 5. And all the vertices in the set V can be colored using a green color. So that uh, the, the properties of graph coloring are maintained. Now you can pause the video for some time and see that the second graph is also, also can be partitioned like this into two sets U and V and it can, it can also be colored using two colors. 
It is also to be noted that the time complexity of determining whether a given graph is bipartite is given by big O of V plus E, where V is the number of vertices and E is the number of edges. So, in fact, this, this time complexity is, uh, is polynomial in nature and, uh, and it can be determined in polynomial time. Now, with all these backgrounds, it will be very easy for us to understand the approximation algorithm for planar graph coloring. Uh, the approximation algorithm takes two arguments, V and E, where V is the set of vertices and E is the set of edges. So, inside the algorithm, what, the, what it does is that it checks whether V is a null set. If V is a null set, then it will return 0. It means that there are no vertices and Therefore, you require no colors to color it. Else if, if the edge set is null, it means that there is only one vertex in that. And it requires only one color to color it. Else if, we will go, we will go ahead and check whether, whether the given graph is a bipartite graph. And if it, is a, it turns out that it is a bipartite graph, bipartite graph then we know that it requires only two colors to color it otherwise we will return four because we know that all planar graphs can be colored using four colors now it is also important to analyze the complexity of this algorithm to determine whether the vertex set is null it takes only order one it takes only an order one complexity and to determine whether the edge set is null, it also takes only order 1 complexity. Now the important thing here is to determine whether the given graph is a bipartite graph. We already know that uh, to determine whether a graph is bipartite takes an order of V plus E, where V is the, the set of, uh, V is the number of vertices and E is the uh, number of edges. Otherwise you are going to just return 4. So this is also takes order of 1. So in total, the order of this, uh, the com time complexity of this algorithm is going to be order of V plus E. Now, the approximation algorithm that we have discussed comes under the category of absolute approximation algorithms. And the performance guarantee of this algorithm is given by uh, C minus C star is always less than or equal to 1, where C is the solution returned by our approximation algorithm and C star is the optimal solution. The same definition can be more formally defined like this, modulus of C star minus C is going to be less than or equal to 1. This fact can be easily verified from this table. If the number of vertices is 0, then uh, our approximation algorithm will always return a 0. Uh, an optimal solution will also be a 0. So C star minus C will be 0. And if the number of vertices is 1, then our approximation algorithm will return 1 and the optimal, optimal, optimal solution will also be 1 and so it will be again 0. If G is bipartite, then uh, approximation algorithm will return 2 and C, uh, the optimal solution will also be 2. So in this case also it will be 0. In other cases, you have two possibilities. Uh, your approximation algorithm may return a 4. At the same time, uh, your optimal solution may be 3. So in that case, uh, your modulus of C star minus C is going to be 1. The other possibility is that uh, your approximation algorithm, when it returns 4, uh, the actual uh, optimal solution may also be 4. In that case, modulus of C star minus C is going to be 0. So you can verify that in all cases, Modulus of C star minus C is always going to be less than or equal to 1. In fact, it is either 0 or 1. 
Now, as an assignment, you can work out the following two questions. Question number one is to find the chromatic number chi of g of the graphs in figure one and figure two. And also draw the configuration using numbering instead of coloring. And question number two is to check whether the graph shown in figure two is a bipartite graph. Uh, if it is a bipartite graph, you have to separate uh, its vertices into two sets, u and v, and show their connections. Thank you.